Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. LSU versus Clemson National Championship Preview Show. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And obviously... We are pretty pumped about this. We got our purple in the background. That's right. Chris has got his LSU shirt on. That's right. We are ready to rock and roll. We're going to talk tonight about uh, Tua declaring for the NFL draft. We'll talk about Mississippi State firing Joe Moorhead. And we'll start off with our preview of the national championship game. That'll be next Monday night at 7 p.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone, on ESPN from Nolens, Louisiana, from the Superdome down there. But first, before we start all of that, the show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com, along with all of the other great stuff that they've got. Steakhouses, golf courses, uh, hotels, all the different casinos and whatnot. They got good stuff. Tunicatravel.com. Go check it out. Do yourself a favor. Let's fire in um, two 14-0 teams. So you will you will end up having your second ever fifteen and zero national championship after Clemson did it last year. Clemson has what is this twenty nine straight wins? They're looking for thirty. LSU has they lost to A and M, so they've got fifteen yeah. straight wins right now. Yep. So they've got half of it. But either way, what happened last year is irrelevant. Completely irrelevant. Yeah. Completely irrelevant. But. It's still worth mentioning. I, think. I okay. I think it's still. You worth like mentioning. to talk about things that are irrelevant all the time. <laughs> you bring them up. Constantly. I ain't even trying to fight with you today, and and you already firing in with me. All right, LSU nine four and one against the spread. Clemson eleven and three against the spread this year. Uh, last four games, both of them are no. LSU's three and one, and Clemson is four and zero oh against the spread. Uh, now it's slightly different because LSU covered against all of the. Great teams they were supposed to, and did not cover against Arkansas because that line was absurd. Yeah, it's like forty-two. Yeah, so not really looking at the four games, but if you look at just the last three, like LSU has been dominating. We actually played competition this year. Uh, big stat on here: the the biggest difference in all of these stats, yards per game, defensive yards per game, defensive points per game. Da 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 da. da. So LSU. Giving up 4.9 yards per play on the season. That is number 25 in the country. Uh, Clemson is number two with 3.9. But if you go back and look over the last three games, that's against Oklahoma, Georgia, Texas A&M, LSU 3.9. And Clemson is like 5.1. It is not great. Uh, but LSU is number one in the country over those last three games. So when it comes down to play. the dick cutting, it mattered. And then they did it against... I would say teams that were like the equivalency to Girl Scouts, but that's an insult to Girl Scouts. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I mean, yeah, if we got right. to play Miami, if we got to play Florida State this year, offensively, really? Yeah. Really? I, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. All right. Syracuse, they're real good, aren't they? You know what's crazy to me? Uh, so, Massey, like, you and I, like, we we – at least respect yes the Massey Peabody rankings and, right. and everything that goes. We into acknowledge that. it because we we do think that there's some you know stigmas yeah. to it. Um, Massey's strength of schedule. Clemson is number fourteen. LSU number three. I just find that completely asinine. I don't know how they get that. I don't know what you can put in your computer to make it give you that number. Like it, it made no sense to me at all because they don't have a single ranked team on there. So what are they getting? Well, I mean, obviously, like the rankings don't just go to twenty five for I, Massey. Okay, but I mean, who's the like? Florida State made a bowl game. Like the ACC had a bunch of bowl teams that all lost. But yeah, that's where I'm getting at. Like, they were I, at three and seven in bowl games. Yeah, I mean, Wake Forest. Now, they lost. didn't get ten teams in, but they. No, I they, think they got nine. They. I mean, they got a bunch of teams to six and six. You know why? Because everybody beat everybody. Yeah, everybody beat up on one another. Virginia nope. got beat by Florida. Virginia Tech be, uh, got beat by Kentucky. Uh, Wake Forest got beat by Michigan State. You know, Clemson won, but uh, you know, I. But 
We've always said one. Clemson is the only outlier in this conference. Yeah. It's uh it's strange. Everybody else is not just mediocre. They're bad. Um LSU offensive rushing yards per attempt number 32 in the country at 4.86. Clemson number 1 in the country 6.41, but we saw last game Ohio State kind of set a little bit of a blueprint to be able to slow that down. Yeah. Now I would say that LSU doesn't have the players that Ohio State does, but they do. They they absolutely do. So I just wonder if it was an Ohio State scheme, but if you give Dave Aranda two weeks, he'll be able to figure out something to be able to slow down Travis yeah, at the end. I'm not, I'm not worried about. It. I'm a. Uh, I'm. I'm not worried about any of these season long numbers because yeah, that's the thing. They, they're not against equal competition. Yeah, it's it's really so not. they're obviously gonna have better numbers than us. I mean, across the board. Well, not, not not across the board. But, but if they don't, then that's a damn shame. Well, yeah, because they did well, it against nobody. LSU's offense is ridiculous. Oh, I understand that. Yes. Like it, it's the be- <laughs> it's the best I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Not this year. It's the best I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. We went from having one of the worst offenses in all of college with all 130 teams. I, I mean, not it, it in wasn't... last year, but like in, in the, the last two decades. In the yes, in the last 20 years of being an LSU fan, we we've had really mediocre offenses. Yeah, I mean, it's, like, and now we Saban have was there, the was, best we've ever had. Saban was still the ground and pound. But That's right. You, you still had games where Rohan Davey would go off, where Jamarcus Russell. I mean, it, Jamarcus Russell threw. No, Rohan Davey, Davey is the one. That Rohan threw for Rohan him. Davey is the one that that really lit it up under under Saban. But he he threw for five hundred and thirty something yards in Tuscaloosa again, and it wasn't a great Alabama team by yeah. any stretch of the imagination, but still. Josh Reed went for almost 300 yards receiving in that game. Yeah. It was stupid. But that I'm going to tell you what that is. That's one of the situations where uh, everybody ex- weakness everybody expects the run game. Everybody expects a run game. Everybody expects a run game. We're beating them through the air today yeah. because nobody's expecting it. Well, and and yes, and, Alabama and, couldn't stop it. Yes, right. Like, and and they've got a secondary that Nick knows secondaries. Yeah, and he knows how to exploit it, and he's just not going. Not going to stop it. We talked about this on the L, uh, the NFL podcast the breakdown after the the Titans game. Why, why would you ever throw the football? Why yeah. would you ever bring him off the field? Like yeah. if you've got, and that's the way Nick coaches. That's the way Belichick coaches. That's the way the best coaches do it. If I've got something and you can't stop it, I am. I I will run the same play all game long, and it might be a snooze fest to everybody else, but we're killing you. Yeah. Like I, my job is to win, not give you. But something that's fun that was an that was an abnormal game. The rest of that season, they didn't do that. No, 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 no. That that was that was o was it o three? I think it was o three. It was like was it o three or o five. No, it was o three. O five. Okay. Alabama went ten and two, and that was like a sixteen thirteen uh, overtime game with LSU. So that that was that wasn't it then. Yeah, okay. No, I think it was o three. It wasn't the national championship year because Rohan no, didn't no, win no, a no. title. It was uh, it, maybe it was. I don't remember. It was it was early. I don't, it may have been I don't 2000, remember. 2001. Yeah. Maybe it had but it was it year. was before the title. Yeah. It was it was bad though. Yeah. Um but it's it's the same thing here. LSU fantastic offense. They will find a weakness and they will pick on it. The question is what is the weakness? It's not one guy either. No. That's the problem. You know how they're able to find the weakness is because it's not one guy. Yeah. I mean there's six that are all just as stupid dangerous as can be. And if you can't cover all six, you're dead. Yeah, because on, they'll all take it to the house on one play. And it's and that's even against Clemson. Like it, I understand Clemson's back seven, really good this year. That's right, super experienced. Yep. And and big and physical. Yeah, but uh, they, but they Ohio don't State have. should have scored so many more points on this team uh, that I I don't think LSU. We're not dropping offense, those balls. Yeah, I don't think I don't think they do that. Not, um, I guarantee you those. Now he doesn't have the size or speed Dobbins has, but those Dobbins drops. Oh no! Edwards no. Hilaire is not Hilaire is not yeah. dropping those balls. That's a hundred percent not dropping those balls. And he'll be back balls. looking even better than he did I'm against about to Oklahoma. Say, he looked fine against Oklahoma. They just yeah. why why risk any injury? What what's the kid's name that played behind him? 
Uh, he's a freshman with the, oh, with the dreads. Sh- yeah, I, Carter or something like no, that. No, no, I should know this off the top of my head. I'm so bad with Either names. Way, you know it, that they're they're freshmen. Like John Emery, I thought was going to be playing. And then coming and, coming back, we've got a lot of freshmen. Like, yeah, uh, r- running back is. But running back's never been a problem at LSU. That's how we win football games. Yeah. We ground and pound, and we score 13, and we shut you out. Yeah, uh, Curry. Curry. That was it, it. Curry. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's ridiculous. No, he's he's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to thing. see There's a lot Hilaire of come players. back, but, you know, we'll see. I mean, it, honestly, you may not even need him. I'm not worried about next year. I'm not even thinking about next year. Forget next year. I'm thinking let's about talk, next week. Let's continue talking about Monday night here. Um, with all of that said, part of me still feels like the line here is six and a half. It's five and a half, pretty much everywhere still. Well, it, so it opened at five and a half, but if you look on uh, uh, Sportsbook Review at all the different spreads and whatnot, like I saw six and a half today at three o'clock when I was working on this. I'm 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 looking at four different places. Or where, where's the where, where am I? Where do I need to go? I was on the NFL Vegas odds. Yep. It'll give me all the Vegas books. You know, one place got six, five and a half, six, five and a half, six, five and a half, five and a half, five and a half, six. So it's dropped it's, a little bit. Yeah, it's it's pretty much stayed at five and a half. It opened there and it's bounced up a touch at a few places, but it's for the most part not moved off that number. It feels like a little bit too much. the The line last year was Alabama minus six. Okay, and while this game is in New Orleans and all that. I do think LSU wins the game. Alabama ain't close to the team this team was. This team is. They're just not. I do think LSU wins. Tua got pulled from that game, and Jalen had to come in and save his ass. From wasn't that the Alabama game? The which game are you talking about? The national championship game. Or was that the Georgia game? No, that was the Georgia game that Tua got pulled. That, that Tua got hurt. Yeah. Okay. It's, <laughs> but okay. Yeah, Jalen came in and and yes, I'm with you. But all right. Not no, Clemson. Game. Clemson beat Alabama like 44 to 16 last year. Well, I know that. So, but yeah, that's. I know the game was out of hand. Yeah, it was. It was completely okay. Whatever. Uh, but I'm only bringing that up as it's the same line as that it was last. That year. didn't matter. It's all bullshit. That it, it didn't matter, Gary. I what happened this, last year is irrelevant. All I'm saying is I think it's going to be a close game. Okay. I think it will be, it'll come down to the wire. And I think Cade York is going to be the one to win the ball game for him. I, that may be a little crazy because they haven't lined up for a ton of field goals this year. But when they have, he's been money. Okay. At least towards the back half of the season. Like they kicking, on, if they're kicking field goals, they're losing. No, no, no. I don't think they kick all the time. I they're think saying, this comes down to end they, of the ball game. They kick any. You think so? Yeah. I think this game, it won't be as bad as Oklahoma, but if if we can come out and slow them down like Ohio State did, this is going to be 28 to nothing, and they're not coming back. I yeah. fully believe we can score on anyone. I no, really I'm, believe I'm that. There's you. not a defense in the, NF, uh, in, in the NFL, in the NCAA, <laughs> in all of college football that can shut this offense down. I believe that. This is my opinion. From okay. what I have seen, I think they're that – Good. There's not a single position on the field where I think they have an advantage. Uh, you may be right. Uh, you you may be right. I, I, I know that that quarterback is beautiful, and, and he is pretty, and he is and he really, play. really good. Like he, he'll be the he number one really, pick next year. He is really good at football. Joe has he, outperformed he, him. He, he, is, he is not as good as Joe Burrow. He's just not. No, not this season, for sure. Etienne is an absolute stud. Etienne is from New Orleans, and he is coming home. He didn't come to LSU. He chose to go to Clemson, and, and I think they're going to take that personal. And I don't think he's going to get much. Now, he didn't get much against Ohio State. Those, uh, no, he didn't get a lot of rushing yards, but he like, – he, 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 was, he was the big passing guy. Those receivers, those receivers didn't do a whole lot against Ohio State. Uh, and our no, secondary, right. I like our secondary better than theirs. Now, Mel Kuyper doesn't, but Mel Kuyper can kiss my ass. <laughs> we'll rob my guys. My guys who yeah. shut Oklahoma down. Okay? Yeah. Shut them down. That's the best offense in football, that's, everyone I, said. I, that's what I'm trying to figure. Like, Texas A&M, Georgia, and Oklahoma. Now, Georgia, we get right it. home that's about right. But the fact that those three teams, 
the fact that our offense destroyed Georgia well, is not, it not tells that. tells me well, our offense can score on anybody. Well, yes, because yes. that defense is real. What I'm talking about is LSU's defense. Yes, against Oklahoma. Yeah, against Oklahoma and A and M. Those are real numbers, and that should scare the hell out of everybody. I mean, three point nine yards per play. Yep. Uh, Oklahoma is number two in the country. Yep, in yards per play, or no, number three after that game. But yeah. That's ridiculous. That's that's scary. You know, Alabama's that offensive mind at Oklahoma. Oklahoma that offensive out. mind at Oklahoma. You think he's better than the than the OCs hanging out in Clemson? That are, are waiting. That are waiting on their next job. The that yeah. are waiting on their next job. Yeah, I mean, I, I know I'm a homer. I get it. Call me that all you want. It doesn't make the stats or facts any different. I don't think there's any way they stop our offense. So it's either going to be an 80 point football game, or or we're going to beat their ass. And I think Ohio State shut them down. Now, we don't have to shut them down. We don't have to have them not score the entire first half like Ohio State did. They don't have to go over until the last three minutes of the game. But, but if we just hold them to a couple of field goals, it's ball game. If we hold them to a couple of three and outs, it's over. I really believe that. Are you going over the 69 and a half? I'm not going to touch the over-under. I don't think I'm going to. I'm not going to touch it with one like, bit, but I but I believe that we I believe that anything less than double digits is now if we win the game by one point, I'll be the happiest man you have ever seen in your life. Because this is the greatest team I've ever seen in my life in all of college football. And all they have to you, do is win this game. Are you putting money on it? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't made up my mind on that. Wait, are you feeling like it might jinx? No, because no. I've bet on them. I mean, I bet I bet on them against Alabama. Of course, they were dogs then. Um, I, I I bet on them a lot this year. I bet them against Florida. Bet on them against. I mean, I bet on them a lot this year. Okay, so I'm not I'm not opposed to betting on them. I'm. If you won't take Clemson, you think it's going to be a close game? I'm going to tell you the the odds are that it's going to be a close game. Eighty something. Now this this is not one of those things where we record on Tuesdays and so the line's only been out for a day and a half and we don't now really this, know this the number. Been out for over a week now. This this number has been out for over a week and 81% of the bets as of right now in Las Vegas. This is not offshores. This is Las Vegas only. 81% of the numbers are on LSU and they haven't moved this number. They've moved it. If they moved it, they moved it a half point. Yeah. So the so Vegas is sticking to the number, thinking it's going to be close. But Let's, Vegas yeah. also, before the season started, said Clemson would be a double digit to a seven point favorite against everybody but Alabama, even Ohio State. Yeah, and that, and so obviously your, things have changed. So your early line, yeah, but nobody projected LSU to be this good. No, I didn't. no nobody, and no, and no, nobody, nobody thought they'd be. I mean, they didn't think they'd be this good when the season started. No, no, it, it, this is this is Joe Burrow. Uh, and that wide receiver core, yeah, just completely flipping. They fin- a They finally had an off season, so I didn't realize that last year, which Joe came in and literally started school and started as a quarterback with no off season workout. He wasn't there for two days. He wasn't there for training. He got there in August. They started playing football at the end of August. Yeah, he did. Yeah, that's right. And this year he had all of last season, but this off season he had the entire off season to work with the wide receivers. Yeah, because it was and he it talks was like he May. talked about that a lot. That makes sense. And and so I don't know that this is a thing where he wasn't capable of this last year. It was just you just don't build the chemistry and the timing and there's so many things. You only got so many hours to practice as a college student. You got all these restrictions and stuff. So he he finally was able to have a full off season with them and this is what they're capable of doing. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty I, crazy. I, I, I'm very excited about this game because I think I think I think we're going to win. I haven't gone into a big – I've had confidence that we could win every game. I felt like we were going to kill Oklahoma, and we did. Well, yeah. I But, I mean, I kind of felt that way against Georgia, and we did. The only games that I was worried about was Alabama, Auburn, and Florida. But that was early in the season when I didn't know what this team what this was team, fully capable of. Yeah. All right, so so what is your feeling – right? like you think – I think I think it's going to be a lot like when I say a lot like Oklahoma, we're not going to beat them by forty, okay? But but the offense will be. I think the offense clicking. Will, the only way we don't score a ton is if they hold the football for a long time. And if I was them, I'd hold the football for as yeah. long as I could. I'd, I'd turn I'd turn my ass into army. 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's the smartest way to do it. Because you're not stopping. This yeah. train is not, it's not stopping. And that's what could be crazy. Is it? So, uh, good news, of course, I don't, I don't think I brought this up. Michael Divinity, clear to play. Yeah. So, play. LSU with even more of a pass rush. Uh, now I, That'll much, be important, but I don't know that. I don't they, think that affects they Trevor have Lawrence such, that much. They, well, and they have such a quick passing game. Yeah. Um, you, you really want to contain him and just keep him in the pocket to where he doesn't run on you. Um, excuse me. Because it's, it's just one of those situations where he gets the ball out so fast. Sacks. He just doesn't take a lot of sacks. No. No, no he sure Now, he has been sloppy with the ball this year. Yes, he has. That's a big part of it. And that. we got secondary guys that are going to play wide receiver next year. You know what's crazy? With all the, the Trevor Lawrence turnovers and whatnot early in the season, uh, at the end of the year, finished number seven in turnover margin. No, um, and he talks about how he learned from all those things and he realized well, you know what he they shouldn't did. Take, take the ball away. Uh, but I also think... You know, he didn't really play a – not that he played a great defense all year, but, like, a lot of those turnovers came in the A&M game. And A&M's yeah. secondary took the ball away from a lot of people. Like, they weren't a great defense, but that's a, that's a very well, well did, defensive coach team. This was early in the year, and what this is is he's still just a second year. That's like right. Second year out of high school. And last year they didn't open the playbook as much. No. This year, well, they didn't know they what just, he was capable of right. at the beginning of the year last this year. year. And, and beginning of this year, they just kind of opened it up and let him experiment, let him kind of figure things out as he went. And I think though, like those growing pains were actually good. Like you were never in danger, other than the North Carolina game. He was never in danger of losing a game. That's right. So why not just let him have at it for a little bit? And once the second half of the season kicked off, like once they almost lost to North Carolina. Everybody buckled down, and it was time to get after it. And, you know, now he's he's still a true sophomore. That's right. Like, he's still got a whole another year to go before he can even go pro. So, you know, there there's still things that you can find ways to to rattle him, I think. They're they're going to score because their yeah. offense is good. And their defense is, is really good. I expect Venables to make a lot of adjustments. We're going to punt some. This isn't Oklahoma where we yeah. punt none. But when I said we wouldn't punt. We didn't punt no. until we called the dogs off. Um, I, I I understand that. I think the problem is, is do they get in a hole before Venables can start making adjustments? And my other question is, is no defensive coordinator, no defensive-minded coach yet has been able to make adjustments to this offense. And that's one of the things that Enzinger and O talk about Joe Brady – Everything you throw at him, he has a counter for. And they will sit in a classroom and situationally say, okay, you have done this successfully. We're going to change this up, and we're going to change this up. How do you defend, How do you attack this now? He's like, oh, you just swap to this, you counter to this, you audible to this, boom, boom. And he's got a perfect plan for every adjustment that they were able to throw at him all year when preparing for teams. And that's been talked about. Venables is is the the best other than Aranda. That that is one and two defensive guys in the world at college football. That there's yeah, as far as adjustments and whatnot. Yeah, there is there yeah. is no one else better than them. The problem is is nobody's been able to make those adjustments yet because you change on the defense, but the offense can change so much too. And it's it's simply because they have so many options. Yeah. They just have so many options. They can go deep. They can go, and he throws it seventy percent deep. When you can throw deep, there is no adjustment for that. If you got a guy that's one on one, and he can throw a guy open forty yards down the field, nobody else is capable of doing that. No, you're right. Not at a seventy percent clip, and so there, there's no defensive adjustment for that. No, you're right. And if they have to go short. Man, they've got slants, they've got a screen game, they've got all of they've got playmakers at every skill position there is, and the offensive line is really good. I know that Clemson's gonna get a pass rush, and I know Clemson's going to get after it. Yeah. But it's just get the ball out fast. Yeah. And trust no, Burrow course. to when he breaks away and he does his little scramble drill. Yeah. No, you're right. Hope hope he don't find somebody. Let's uh Let's go ahead and make official picks. I'm going to take Clemson plus six. Uh, this is just against the spread. Yeah. 
Like I think you're I think you're LSU on the side of again. Vegas and you're on the side of Vegas big, yeah. by the way. Like it's not close. Yeah, I figured I And I think that number's getting bigger too. Like I don't think when we get close oh, to the game time yeah. pe- game and, and I will tell you this. This is not a everybody hates Clemson. It's just you've been in the championship five damn years. Nobody cares. Like all your casual fans that are tuning in to watch this game and to gamble in this game. <laughs> all right, we're still good on everything, right? Yeah, we're I recording. just got bulldog bulldogged over. Sorry about that. Uh, it's all good. I lost my ears, but that's okay. Um, like this is not a Dabo going to do the all oh, shucks. Nobody thinks we deserve to be here. Golly, this we just no no good. Nobody thinks we're any good. Shut your mouth, Dabo. Nobody cares what you think. You talk. You you just say things that make you look stupid and sound like an idiot, and that's why nobody respects what you say. But but the problem is is this isn't an everybody hates you. This is just casual fans who are saying, holy shit, look at this offense. Look how fun these guys are. Look how awesome this is. We're going to bet on these guys. Yeah. And that's all That's all this is, is we're, we're just going to go where the fun action is. You got new blood. You got fresh blood in the playoffs in, in the championship game. It hadn't been there. You got, you got this offense that's explosive. You got this team that's exciting. And – you know, I didn't think we would ever get a Heisman Trophy winner from the SEC to get the love from the Big 12 and the Big 10 oh, yeah. that we got. And that was unbelievable. So part of me feels like, you know, when everybody goes one way, it usually goes the other. But so much of this is just fandom. So much of the money oh, I think yeah. this year is strictly just, you know. Well, especially we, in a game like this. We want to be a part. Yeah, winner take all. We want to be a part of the – exciting new thing and that's it that makes sense that makes sense All right. i like lsu i like lsu big lsu minus six for you clemson plus six for me uh we got a few more minutes let's go ahead and talk about a a couple other topics first off let's see at the 27 minute mark Tua tonga valoa declares for the nfl draft along with him uh xavier mckinney henry ruggs uh, a few others. Najee Harris has not declared. Jerry Judy has declared. So coming back to Alabama, you've got Alex Leatherwood, Dylan Moses, Devonta Smith. Now Moses' daddy wasn't happy about said, it. No, he he put the brakes on it. He was like, "That's yeah, no, that's he, he not put definite." The on it, but then Dylan came back out the next day and said, "This is my decision. I'm coming back to school." So that's that's about as official as it gets. Like he's coming back. Okay. Um. Which, I don't know if it's a smart idea. I mean, he's been hurt twice now. Yeah. So, maybe go make your money. But, I mean, he didn't have a first-round grade. No, so, you're right. You know, it is what it is. He would, uh, he would have been a flyer guy. Yeah. So, I, I think the Tua decision, one, influenced several others to go ahead and go. Um, because people just love being around that guy. But the other side of this is, what? A, th- this was not even a decision. I didn't think so either, and like, I thought I, there was so much hype about this. And and me being the Alabama fan, it's yeah. like, oh, this would be cool. But like, first off, do we even know if he was going to play next year? Yeah, and is and on he top of capable that, of coming back from this injury? But it, that puts such a, a change on like the quarterback room, and because the plan for him has always been leave after your junior year. Yep. Because Bryce Young is coming in. You've still got Mac Jones. You got his little brother there. You got like all these different things, and it, it's supposed to be all right. Next man up after Trey. Right. But for for just keeping the Alabama thing out of it, just looking at Tua, I I would have felt really strange cheering for him next year because you're just hoping every single game that he doesn't get hurt. Man, I I think you got to go and and it's to simply get the guaranteed money. Yeah, because you're still going to be a first round pick. Uh, he's still going to be, I think, a top ten pick. Yeah, still. I mean, I'm, I'm curious as to, I'm I'm very curious about the quarterback market this year. I, at first, I thought there was going to be a lot of people vying for quarterback, but apparently, people are more excited about the quarterbacks they have than I thought originally, which I think is a mistake. Um, but he's a project uh, yeah. because of the injury, and he's a risk because I mean he's had two ankle surgeries, one on both ankles. Yep. And now a hip, and we don't have a lot of history with guys in hips. In hips, yeah. So our only history ankle, is from thirty years ago, and and the medical technology is so different now. We don't know. Oh, okay, Bo did this, 
but you know, Bo didn't get the medical treatments to has gotten. What does that equate to? One guy never played again. The other guy, can he play? Is it susceptible to being re-injured? Like all these questions, we don't really have an answer to. Right. Yeah. It, it changes things up a little bit. Um, yeah, I, it's a risk, but I think that there are still teams like the Dolphins. Oh, like no, there's tons, of, there's tons of teams that are, teams that that are, are going to take, take a chance. And and if you are going to play, if you are going to rehab, even if you're not going to play next year, yeah. if you're going to rehab, go collect the paycheck. Yes. Go go do that and do it on an NFL team's watch with the best doctors and the best people. The problem is, is you got to go to a team. Now, you don't have any control over this because of the draft. you got to go to a team that has good doctors and good yeah. medical facilities. Yeah, that's looking little, at that's you, Washington. <laughs> I don't. I don't think we have to worry about that. Um, no, but I'm just saying, like, there, Washington's not the only place that just seems to not be able to take care of their guys. True, true. Uh, I don't. I don't. Just personal thoughts. I don't think he gets past number seven. Uh, right there, you've got number five. It's the a, Dolphins. You've it's got, impossible to know who's going to trade up. Uh, true. That's true. The, that's the one thing we don't know. But if they, I, I could see people trading up who, for him. Yeah. Who comes and gets so it? So I could see the Chargers taking him. I could see the Panthers taking him. Yeah. Both those teams are way past seven, though, right? No. The Chargers are six, and the Panthers are seven. Oh, okay. And so that, that's what I'm saying there. It, like it, at, at the very latest, I would imagine eighteen is where the Dolphins take their next selection. So, yeah. I mean, you go in the top eighteen of the draft, and you're coming off an injury. You got to do this. Yeah. Like, you got to go. Easy. You got to go. Let's see. Let's close up with this. We won't spend forever on it, but we haven't gotten a comment on it yet. Mississippi State fired Joe Moorhead last Friday. This was not just because of his record. It wasn't... Mississippi State fans, I don't believe, have unreal expectations. Last year's team should have won more than they did. They had I'd have the, fired him because of what he did last year. It, it was... It was pretty bad last year. I'd have fired him because we, you can't fire a guy after one year. I get it. I'd, I'd have done it. They played in, what was it, 13 games last year? They only gave up 12 touchdowns for the entire season and went 8-5. and five. But you're an offensive guru. I don't know how that's even possible. But 8-5 and five last year. With was the, the previous the year, country. the best, one of the like top three best quarterbacks in the, all the SEC, and that's a year where you had from and Eason, uh, from and, uh, and, and Tua, in the same year. So now you and I don't like him because of the on field stuff. Yes. But it wasn't just the on field stuff that, that cost him the job here. Uh well, but no, no, that's not necessarily true. I also don't like him for the off field stuff because I've been telling you all year, he after one year, he lost control of the locker room. People on the defense and people on the offense were fighting each other in the locker room. They, they openly publicly all, hated each other. All the time. And it all Coincided, it all came to a stop. It all came to a halt in a practice at the bowl game where a young man Willie who was Gay Jr. already suspended for academic fraud yep. for half the season. Which is what I was going to get into. Not just punches out the quarterback, what but breaks his orbital? orbital bone. Yeah. He breaks his face, man. And if you haven't seen the picture of Garrett Schrader in the hospital, it, uh, he's his, with his face his all jacked up. Is, his eye is completely swollen shut. Like he can't even. And guess what? Anything. Mr. Gay played in the bowl game. Yeah, he did. He didn't. And Moorhead game. comes out and says, no suspension needed. Nothing to see here. It's just a dust it's up just, in practice. It's just a dust up in pra- ha- practice. Fights happen all the time. Yeah, they do under you. You damn right they do. Y'all fight all the time. Now the this the, guy had chaos all over him. Oh yeah, and on top of that, the so it brought the, nothing positive. The part time scandal or the part time tutor scandal. Yeah, uh, that happened in the 2018-2019 fall semester. Under Moorhead, after, after he got there, that wasn't yeah. a Dan Mullen situation that he's paying a price for. Yeah, this is like he had lost complete control of his program within two years. It looked that like is, he just didn't know what was allowed, what was not. It's just so when people think, well, somebody's a good OC or a DC, they'll make a great head coach. They just don't realize all the things head coaches have to deal with. 
because yes. they only have to deal with one side of the ball and not a whole hell of a lot of NCAA well, stuff. They just deal with football stuff. On top of that, it's not – because he was a, a successful head coach at Fordham, but it but it's Fordham. That's, what are you doing at Fordham? But that's the thing. You don't you don't have to recruit at Fordham. You got you 45 kids on the roster. And, and they're all just guys that are going to school. That, that want to be go, there. Yeah, you don't have to go recruit. You just coach the guys you got. And they're not problem kids. They're just kids. They're just normal kids. Yeah. You you don't have to worry about competing for SEC championships no, or, or whatever. So yeah, it's it's a little bit different. You're, you're was, doing no different than an OC's job in just coaching football. Pretty much, you're not doing any of this other stuff. Pretty much, you're right. So it'll be interesting to see who they end up picking up. Uh, Napier turned the job down. Uh, all signs were pointing to Joe Judge, who was just hired by the New York Giants. Um, Judge was a special teams analyst. Under Nick Saban, got uh, got two BCS title rings, got three Super Bowl rings under Belichick. Um, Judge was the wide receivers coach at New England. Yeah. Would anybody like to answer how good the wide receivers were at New England, or how good the special teams were at Alabama the last two years, uh, let's, or the last yeah. decade for let's, Alabama? Let's let's talk about who improved, who who had a season above their expectation. At the wide receiver position at at a, at a, at the Patriots, because I think none of them. I don't. I can't name one. But good job, New York. <laughs> awesome. You're doing great. So, so now everything's fantastic. Now uh, all signs are pointing to Todd Grantham. They're interviewing Todd tomorrow, right? Yeah, from what I understand. I uh, think that's just an if. And now I like Todd. I don't know, but see, I don't know. Does he have he, the chops to be a, a head coach? Well, he, it seems like a, um, it seems like a Jeremy Pruitt type hire. I could see that. You know, hard nose. Well, they wanted Pruitt. Yeah, I tried mean, to hire Pruitt. Hard nose defensive guy, rah rah in your face, whatever. That's a defensive guy, though. Have you ever yeah. met a Have you ever met a defensive coordinator that was really good? That was like just real chillax. Any of them? No, no. In the NFL, there are several. Like Romeo Cornell is just like the coolest guy on the sidelines. Yeah. Like I mean, but he's he, not always the best. But no, but no, he's good. He's fine. Yeah, he's, he's been fine. in the He's been in the league for thirty years. All right, he's been in the league a long time. So, but I'm just saying, in college football, defensive guys are not. No, it's, Chill, they're, they're all rah rah guys. They're all rah rah guys. Uh, I, they, I really wish. I, they, I don't hate it. I, I like really it. wish they would go after Bill Clark. Me too, but you know how I feel about Bill. Well, it's, I do yeah, too. it's what I told you. Yeah. That, like people look at him for whatever reason because he has no experience in in big jobs like that, and I think that's partly Moorhead's problem as well. Like, had no idea the expectations that come with the job. Yeah, but I think Moorhead would have failed at any head coaching job in a Power Five or a big group think, of five I, jobs. I think Moorhead would have been fine in like a Big Ten job. No I way. I think the SEC is there just no, a completely no different no chance. Coach. There's no chance. There's no chance he would have been fine at any Big Ten school there is. Man, you put him somewhere like Purdue. He'd have been a Rutgers. damn loser. And Purdue, Purdue went to a bowl game last year. Purdue's trying to win six to eight games a year now. Under Brom, with him there, man, they're still they're back to the four win seasons. Now, you might be right. I don't believe in that guy. I just don't. He can prove me wrong, but I'll call me Mister Blue because I'll be blue in the face, holding my breath, waiting for it. I'm I'm curious who uh, who he ends up going with as OC because I, I doubt that he sits this season out. Like, there's plenty of big time plays that like Notre Dame still doesn't have an OC, right? Yeah, and Brian like, Kelly is an offensive guy. So okay. Brian Kelly's not worried too much about his offensive coordinator. He can. I mean, we'll we'll see. He'll tell him what to run. Pretty much. Yeah, he just needs a play caller. Yeah, he needs somebody to call the and plays. More head showed at help run the offense. Yeah, he can run. He can run an offense. All right. So that is going to wrap up the show. Anything else you think we uh, we need to hit? Nope. All right. I think so we're good. as the uh, as the weeks go, now that uh, we're getting to the end of college football, we're going to still be talking college football because this stuff never ends. I mean, there's always stuff to talk about. Um, but our schedule will be, we're going to record, uh, I think three times a week. We're going to release a podcast Monday through Friday, every day. We're going to be hitting on different subjects. We'll be talking college basketball. We'll be talking college football, NFL. Uh, we might throw in some NBA stuff here and there. If anything interesting happens, which to this point, we're about halfway through the season and really nothing interesting. Cool. Now John Morant's most exciting. John Morant is. Yeah. But that's, that's a local story. 
No, it's Damn. not. That's a national story. But listen, the two biggest national NBA guys are Bill Simmons and Ryan Rosillo, and they are both pumping this kid. Big on the John Morant Pumping this kid. That's a national story, man. That's don't say, a, don't no, call no, it local. That's true. Okay, I'm with you. Just, Those are the two biggest national guys I just, talking. I just don't think that the NBA stuff has, has got – once we get towards the playoffs, I think it'll become a bigger thing. But Well, then Memphis will be out of it, but. Well, yeah, but uh, we'll still be able to talk some Grizzlies and whatnot. But, yeah, we're, we're going to talk a whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, stay with us. Of course, uh, last season had a lot of people drop out after football. We don't want you to do that this year. We want you to hang around because we're still going to be talking. So we want somebody to listen to and, and comment and whatnot. If you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Make sure you comment in there. Uh, if you're on the podcast, make sure you subscribe and that you leave a nice review. Five stars. We always appreciate those. Uh, make sure that you go and uh, sign up for the football picks contest. And this this week's will actually end on Monday night because we're going to have the LSU Clemson game in there. So you'll have to get it in on Saturday before the NFL games start. But we'll have props and whatnot. Uh, winning lots of cool stuff. We got night stays at uh at Tunica and whatnot. So lots of cool stuff. Go check it out, winningcureseverything.com. Make sure you go to tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi is the South's premier sports gambling destination. Uh, if there's nothing else, I think uh, I think it's time for us to wrap this thing up. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.